As we begin our next unit on the new nation, we will have 15 vocabulary words that go along with a lot of the concepts that we will be studying regarding our new nation and its government. So let's go ahead and get started. The word ratify means to approve or give formal permission to a law, a contract, or agreement, making it officially legal. So I really like the picture there in the right-hand corner of it being approved. To ratify means to approve something, to say, yes, this is okay, I vote for it. An amendment to the U.S. Constitution must be ratified by three-fourths of the states, either passed by the state legislators or by state conventions. So making an amendment to the Constitution has to have an approval by three-fourths of the states. And you can see that that's a lot um, of the states. That's a majority of the 50 states. Your next word is amend. To amend means to improve or make minor changes in a text in order to make it fairer, more accurate, or more up-to-date. Words that we get from the word amend are amendment and amendable. Every attempt to amend the Constitution has taken a long time, and that's because these improvements and minor changes need to be ratified by three-fourths of a majority. There have been quite a few amendments made to the Constitution, and you're probably most familiar with the first 10 amendments, or the Bill of Rights. The word commerce means the activity of buying and selling, especially on a large scale, or trading. Words we get from the word commerce are words like commercial. Trade that involves the transport of goods, materials, products, services, and people within the United States is called interstate commerce. So anytime you're thinking of buying and selling or trading with businesses and com co companies, I want you to think of commerce. We also have a Department of Commerce in the United States which regulates how things are traded, how things are sold, and how things are bought. Consider going to a store. You have to pay taxes each time that you, you purchase something at a store. The Department of Commerce would regulate um, those kinds of transactions. Your next word is judiciary. The judicial authorities of a country, a group of judges, would make up the judiciary system. And you can see that we get the word judiciary from the word judge, also justice, and judicial. The state judiciary consists of a Supreme Court of six judges and a district court of 53 judges from one to four in each of 20 districts. And you can see our entire U.S. court system right here. In order to make it to the Supreme Court, you have to go through the U.S. District Court, the U.S. Court of Appeals, and then sometimes you even need to go to the state Supreme Court. Overall, there are many different U.S. Court of Appeals in the United States, and you're categorized based on whatever region or whatever geographic boundary would be of those particular judges. So we have lower court judges, and then we have higher court judges. All of the judges in the United States are part of the judiciary system. Your next word is the word executive. Executive means having the power to put plans, actions, or laws into effect. You get the word executive from the word execute and execution, which means to act. And we a lot of times um, see the act of putting to death for these words. But when we think of an executive, I want you to consider the word boss. Um, an executive is a boss who has the power over a company or over a governmental entity. So your sentence for the example is, the boss has an executive position in the company. And you can see that with some pictures here. However, when you're thinking of executive in terms of our government, you would think of the President of the United States. And the President of the United States is the one who carries out the laws or makes the actions regarding how the laws are enforced. So I want you to consider that when you're thinking of the word executive. 
Our next word is the word legislation. Legislation is a group of laws considered to be voted on. So when we're looking at a new piece of legislation that comes through Congress, a lot of times it has several layers to it. It's not just one law. It's the law of how it will be funded. It's the law of how it will be enforced and the law of how it would be enacted. So the sentence there that we have for legislation is a new piece of legislation about cybersecurity was brought up in Congress yesterday. We get the word legislation from the word legislate. And you will see this in conjunction with the word legislative and the word legislature. I want to really bring your attention to the word legislature because the legislature is the group of people, oftentimes the congressmen, who will make the laws. So the legislature is a group of people making the laws. They are legislating the laws. And the laws themselves, or the group of laws, is the legislation. And you can think of that fun movie about the congressional bill becoming a law for this particular word because that's what it means. And our Congress meets in the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. to legislate laws. All right, our next word is federal. Federal means relating to the central or national government. When I want you to think of the word federal, I want you to think of Washington, D.C. for the United States. Words like federation and federalist come from the word federal. The sentence for this would be, there are over 21 million federal employees who work for the national government. That might surprise you. Many of your parents probably are federal employees. That means that the government pays them. They work for a certain department of the government. The federal government is located in Washington, D.C., and it is the overarching government that um, governs the 50 states in our union. Again, uh, most of our legislative um, powers are are um, done in the Capitol building, and this is the federal government. Here's some of the go government departments that the federal government um, is in charge of. And one particular department you're probably familiar with is the FBI. The F in Federal Bureau of Investigation means the federal or national uh, Bureau of Investigation. So those are our national spies or our national uh, Bureau of Investigating for the United States. Your next word is the word revise. Revise means to reconsider, re-examine, re-read, and make changes to improve something. Your English teachers would love that, that you have this word right here because words that come from revise would be revising, revised, and revision. Anytime when you are proofreading something, whether it's your writing, whether it's someone else's writing, you are reconsidering, reexamining, and making changes to improve it. So the Constitutional Convention way back in the day had to revise something, the Articles of Confederation, our first form of government. But in the process of trying to revise it, they realized they were going to ditch the whole thing and start from scratch all over again. So when you hear the word revise, I want you to think of proofreading. And here's our Constitutional Convention deciding, hey, the Articles of Confederation are no good for us. Let's go ahead and, instead of revising, recreate something. The word currency is a system of money in general in general use in a particular country. So you see in the right-hand corner, we have the dollar, we have the pound, we have the euro, we have the yang. These are all currencies. The currency in Great Britain is based on the British pound. And you can see that um, uh, trademark there with the, the L and the line through it. That is what the British pound symbol is. And here's um, a British pound. It's almost like a dollar, but it's um, the dollar for the the United Kingdom. All right, your next word is the word, and it's two words together, which means one idea, an electoral college. Now, this is a word that I um, really have wrestled with as I've grown up because I've never truly understood what it is until probably my college years. This, was, this is a group of people in the United States who officially elect the president of the USA 
their vote happens after the popular vote. So if you're ever watching a campaign on television, you will notice that different states will be different colors based on whatever candidate the population most votes for. But in the end, the electoral college representative is the one who actually votes for their state for president. So your sem sample sentence is, when Americans vote for a president and vice president, they are actually voting for presidential elector, known collectively as the Electoral College. And here is the last election, Obama and Romney. You can see how many Electoral College representatives are in each state. And certain states have more electoral college representatives than others based on how many people live there. So look at California, 55 compared to a state like Maine, who only has four. And that's totally based on how many people live there. And here's just a picture of the actual electoral college casting their votes based on who their state voted for. Your next word is the word unanimous. Unanimous means to approve or give formal permission to a law, contract, or agreement making it officially legal. Now I'm actually going to change this up a little bit. It may actually say on your notes that unanimous means in full agreement, in total full approval of. So words that we get, um, well we actually get unanimous from the word united or unite, unified, and union. The Declaration of Independence was unanimous because everyone who was present at the Second Continental Congress agreed with it. So you see all those little guys saying, agree, agree, agree. Their decision is a unanimous decision. And I like this picture of the many different representatives for different countries, and they all have their hand in the air saying, yes, I approve, I agree. This is a unanimous decision. There's not one person who's saying, no, I don't want this agreement to go through. In Congress, July 4, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. And we're familiar with that. Your next word is compromise. Compromise means a way of reaching an agreement in which each person or group gives up something that was wanted in order to end an argument or dispute. We sometimes have to meet halfway in order to get things moved along. Some people have a hard time giving up a small portion, but if they don't give up a little bit of what they want to happen, nothing will get done. States who had a large population and states with a small population had to compromise when creating how much power congressmen would have way back in the 1800s when we first got our Constitution. Think of a compromise as a halfway agreement, meeting halfway and shaking hands on it. We have to make compromises constantly in business. And you can see these two business officials compromising. Maybe they won't both have what they wanted, but they'll have something in between. We had to do that with the Constitution when we created it. And oftentimes, those compromises gave a little bit of what each extreme side wanted so we could come in the middle and have The next word is minimum. Minimum means the least or smallest amount or quantity possible, attainable, or required. A 90% is the minimum grade to get an A at our school. Here's a state law saying that there's a three feet minimum between the bicycle person, or the person on the bike, and the person in the car. You want to keep it a healthy, safe distance between them. In America, we have a minimum wage. That means the lowest or the least amount of money a company can pay their workers. So the, the minimum wage is $7.25 currently. And you can see the minimum, um, the minimum of those three cakes would definitely be the one that has the least amount of cake and the least amount of icing. All right, we're getting to the end here. We have the word predominantly. Predominantly means mainly for the most part. It will be predominantly cloudy throughout the next four days, according to that chart up there. 
I don't know if in real life that's true. But I thought this map was quite interesting. This shows the leading church bodies from 2000, so it's a little bit dated. But you can see predominantly the red, so predominantly in the south, people's uh, Christian beliefs would be of the Baptist denomination. And you can tell that the New England states, Maine, New York, Massachusetts, their Christian um, religion, they're predominantly Catholic. So I thought that was a very interesting chart there to show the different types of denominations that are represented in America and which ones are predominant in a certain region. Here's the languages spoken in Texas. You can see that the predominant language is English with Spanish right behind. All right, so studying for your upcoming vocabulary quiz. Just a reminder, you can cut out the sort, use it as a tool so that you can go, go ahead and get a head start on um, this quiz that will be after spring break. And also, I want to encourage you to know how to use the words in a sentence because that is the way that I will be quizzing you on your upcoming quiz.